Good morning. Good morning, ladies. It is Wednesday morning. We will be reviewing um, chapter three, which is the historical books. And um, there's a lot of information in this chapter, if you hadn't figured out already. Um, so we're in our 30 days to understanding the Bible book by Max Enders. And we're going to be going over the uh, historical books. I'll give you all a minute to come in. I hope somebody's up this morning. It is uh, 8 o'clock. I'm just a couple of minutes early. And I guess I should have made me. I've already had a cup of coffee. And, um, of course, I got up early and I studied our lesson this morning and the hardest part the two hardest parts for me to remember is um it's it's r if it's parts right the two hardest parts that are hard for me to remember are the um the ezra let me find it the ones that, is hard, that are hardest for me is the return with Ezra, the central return leader, and um, the judges, Samson. I want to say Samuel, and it's Samson. So, um, those two. Now, if you have your book and you've looked at this chapter, you see that there's a lot of information in it. Um, and then the cool thing about it, though, is once we finish this, then we go to each era, era, however you say it, um, and we study each one. So like tomorrow will be on the creation era. So if you have a hard time understanding what it's about, or if you're wondering what these uh, uh, things are about on our timeline, then you will figure it out once we get uh, deeper into the book, okay? So, like, I wanted to pick up my Bible this morning and look up Samson and Ezra just so that I have a better understanding of who they are uh, and what they did. Um, because I'm pretty familiar with the rest of them, but those two kind of threw me for a loop. So, the first thing he does in this is he talks about the, the, the timeline in history um, in U.S. history, and he talks about if we wanted to put the U.S. history on a timeline, it'd help us understand it, and we'd start with Franklin in the colonial period, and the location would be Boston, and it would end with FDR with the modern era in Washington, D.C., so in between there, you have t the, uh, Jefferson, Jackson, Lincoln, Cleveland, and Roosevelt. So, of course, with Lincoln, you got the Civil War and Gettysburg. So, we kinda, he kind of puts that as a timeline for us to um, see. If y'all want to take a snapshot, you can if you don't have a book, but that'll show you that history timeline, okay? I think so. I went ahead and used a different device so that I could flip the, the camera around so that it wouldn't be backwards. Um, and this is how he's going to talk to us about the stories of the Old Testament, the way he explained the U.S. history one. Like, for instance, the colonial period was Franklin as the person. The location was Boston, and it was as 13 colonies long for independence. That has a storyline, this, which is as 13 colonies long for independence, Franklin leads the formulation of necessary strategy okay so he's going to do the same thing with the old testament so we're going to start out with the era of the creation and the creation is the creation of world and man in early events then we're going to have a patriarch it's the birth of the hebrew people through a family of patriarchs covering a period of period of 200 years now, with the creation, of course, he's going to use the person Adam, and with the patriarch, he will use Abraham, okay? So 
because he's the first patriarch. Now we go into the third one, and it's the it's Exodus, the Exodus of the Hebrew people as they are delivered out of 400 years of slavery in Egypt. And of course, the person will be Moses because he led the people out of Egypt. Then our fourth one is conquest. It is the conquest of the promised land by the Hebrew people upon their return from Egypt. So when they come out of Egypt into the promised land, because they've been gone a long time, they have to get the land back. So that period of time is called conquest. And that is actually, um, I believe that's Jacob, ain't it, Chris? Chris has got on his earphones. Let me look. It's Joshua, yeah. Okay, so then you go to Judges. So after they've been there for a while, they need a judge because they've gotten back in their old habits and their old ways, and God's trying to call them back to him. So uh, their, their exile out of Egypt is pretty far out of the mind and heart. So he sends judges. So we have the judges as a 400-year period, a 400-year period during which Israel is governed by rulers called judges. And the first judge is Samson. And so he is the person that is for that era. Then you've got the kingdom, okay, which was an additional 400-year period, which Israel becomes a full-fledged nation under a monarchy. And the first king is David. So we have David with the kingdom, okay? Um, then we have the exile. The exile is a 70-year period during which Israel's leaders live in exile, having been conquered by foreign countries. So after the 400 reign of the kings, then they are conquered and they are in exile. And the person that's with that is Ezra. And I'm not real familiar with that, so I'll be learning that at the same time y'all are. No, that's not Ezra. That's Daniel. Sorry. And then they have the return of the exiled Jews to Jerusalem to rebuild the city and the temple. Wait a minute. Let me see. Yeah. And that's Ezra. And then they have a uh, silence period, which is a 400-year period between the close of the Old Testament and the opening of the New Testament. And this area, uh, this era is called the Silence Era, and it is with the Pharisees um, because they are the religious leaders, okay? So then he shows us a chart of these era, eras, and you have to fill in the blanks and learn things as you go. Let me get this over here right. It's so weird to hold this up backwards. Wait a minute, y'all. Let's see if we can get this right. Sorry. Now, here we go. These three on the end are actually going to be New Testament eras, which is the birth of Christ, I'm sure, the church, and the millennium. I'm not sure if that's what that stands for, but I would think. And then over here, you've got the creation, the patriarchs, Exodus. Um, that's where they conquered. So I forgot the name of that one. The judges, the kingdom, the exile, the return, I think, and the Pharisees. So let's see, what is this? Under, the conquest is what that one is. Conquest, sorry, y'all. It's right there under it. Here I am trying to decide what it is. Because I want to learn it. I just don't want to read it. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so, um, then by the end, we learn what the story <clears throat> of the era is. So I'm just going to read them to you because that's pretty much all this, all this is. All this is is learning how to fill in the chart for these eras of the Old Testament, learning who was the key figure for the era, and 
where the location of the era is, whether it's in Egypt, Canaan, Jerusalem, that kind of thing. And then there's a description. So all I'm going to finish up with is we're going to talk about the locations and the descriptions of each era. And then I'm going to be done. And if y'all have a question, you can ask me. And if I can't answer it right off, I'll get it back to you, I promise. So you've got the creation of the of the creation with Adam and Eden. So of course we know, most of us know that Adam and Eve were in Eden. And it's the Garden of Eden where Adam is created near the convergence of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. And remember, we learned that yesterday. Um, then we have the patriarchs, which starts with Abraham. And um, Abraham migrates from Ur near Eden to Canaan, where he and the other patriarchs live until the time of slavery in Egypt. And I was looking at the map, and when you look at this map uh, that we learned yesterday, and you see that they went from the Garden of Eden all the way across where Canaan and Israel winds up, uh, that was a pretty good migration for Abraham to take and leave his family, okay? Um, so remember, he's in Canaan. Then you have Exodus with Moses in Egypt. And during a severe famine, the Israelites migrate to Egypt and are enslaved 400 years before their exodus. And so they uh, get hungry. And they have to go to Egypt for food, and, the, and then they uh, use them as slaves. And then, um, of course, you have uh, a conquest by Joshua in Canaan, which Joshua leads the conquest of the promised land in Canaan. Okay, because Moses never gets there. Remember, he stays, he gets them out of Egypt, but he wanders in, in the uh, wilderness. And so Joshua brings them into the promised land. And then you've got the judges with Samson in Canaan which is their, still their location. The Israelites live in Canaan under a loose tribal system ruled by judges uh, for the next 400 years. All right, so they're ruled, the people are ruled by judges, which is probably good because a judge had uh, a lot of discernment with the Lord. I mean, God uh, blessed them and anointed them, and they had a lot of um, good things to say. But then you've got, then they decided they wanted a king. And so David was the first king that, it's called the kingdom era. Um, and it is in Israel. So once David, once the people decide they want a king, then we have the kingdom era with David. And everybody knows about King David and him um, having an affair with uh, Bathsheba. So just remember, he was the first king, and he was also the man that was after God's own heart, which God just truly loved. Um, so once he took over as king, uh, they changed the name from Canaan to Israel. Okay? So remember that. That kind of helps you. All right, then you've got Daniel. Uh, which is the exile, because of the judgment for national and moral corruption, Israel is conquered by foreign nations and forced their leaders into 70 years of exile in Babylonia. And yesterday, if you remember Babylonia, you, you know where Israel is, on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, Galilee and the Jordan, and then you got the Dead Sea in the bottom, and you've got... Uh, Israel and Canaan on one side of that in between it and the Mediterranean Sea. Well, now they are going to be in exile. They're going to bring them all the way over to Babylon, which is in between the Tigris and Euphrates, okay? And it was because they misbehaved, and so God let them be conquered. You know, um, a lot of people think that God is good, and he is always just out, you know, good in our lives, but there's things he does in our lives that are always that great uh, so that we may become closer to him or he might can use us as a vessel later 
I mean, you just don't know why he does the things he does, but he allows everything in our life to happen. Um, and so he did send those people, his people, to exile in Babylonia. Okay, he did it for a reason. Now, then you've got the next one is the return. So they get to return with Ezra, and they return to Jerusalem. Okay, and um, the exiled Israelites are allowed to return to Jerusalem, rebuild the city and the temple, though they remain under the dominion of Persia. So Persia is still over them, but they let them go back. I think, if I'm not mistaken, and y'all will have to just bear with me because I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm like anybody else. I can't remember everything. But I'm pretty sure they have somebody that's a really good friend of the rulers there. And the ruler sees that he has a really heart, big heart for his people. And so he lets them go back and prepare the temple and rebuild the city. But they're still under his control. Okay, um, then you have the silence period, which was the Pharisees in Jerusalem, and um, the land changes from Persia to Greece to Rome. Israel then is allowed to worship in Jerusalem without disruption for the next 400 years of silence. And this is the whole, pretty much in a synopsis of the whole story of the Old Testament by different periods of time. So he does it so that he gives us a period of time, a ruler in charge, a location, and then what the main point of that history era is. Now, I, I like the way he does it. Uh, I've always had a hard time with history. So then he turns around and gives us the chart again. We write down our answers on the chart. He shows us a chart and he tells us to chart where they move to and from. So if you look, you can tell that they start out in Eden and then um, they moved all the way over to Canaan. Then they got hungry and they moved to Egypt. Moses brought them out of the land of bondage in Egypt back to Canaan. And then you have the, the ruler, uh, David is a king now, so it's called Israel. Then they are brought into exile in Babylonia. And then he lets them go back and they go into Jerusalem. And there in Jerusalem is where it ends with the Pharisees being over them for 400 years. Okay. So, I mean, look at all of that in a nutshell in one chapter but because he continues over and over to give you charts to fill in, you see those charts, charts to fill in here and here, you continually have to apply what he tells you and you learn it. So then tomorrow we will talk about that first era, which is the creation era. So, I mean, he really does a good job of teaching us this stuff. Uh, so that it stays in our head for a little while, you know, which is really good because I can still remember from yesterday what's good about it is he told us today to use the map. So we learned the map yesterday, and today we use the map again. And because we do that, we continue to remember where the Garden of Eden was, where Egypt is, where the Mediterranean Sea is, where the Sea of Galilee is, and it just, it just keeps building and building and building. And it'll all just kind of come into play, and you, you're going to be amazed at how much better you're going to understand how that Bible works and how it was put together uh, with this Bible study. I mean, most of the time, if you're a grandmother or a mother or even a father or a granddaddy and a kid comes to you and he asks you a question, lots of times you just, you know, you don't know how to answer it or you have to pick up your Bible and try to study it. And if you don't know anything about the history of the Bible, it's really hard to picture it in your mind, what's going on. And just like the, them talking about uh, David being the first king, and we know who King David is. Uh, and that era's called kingdom. That's easy to remember. And not only that, but like they talked about how the names changed from Canaan to Israel. And that was confusing to me. I was thinking, well, why did they change the name? But now I realize 
that because they decided that they wanted a king, it became a monarchy, and it changed the name of their country uh, to Israel. Okay, so all that helps me. I mean, just a few days ago, even if I read this book, y'all, I read this book like, uh, I think it was before I had cancer, and I'm eight years out. I probably read this book like 10 or 12 years ago, okay? So all of this refreshes my mind and helps me a whole lot because you lose it if you don't apply it. And that's why it's good to keep the book and have the book so that let's just say two years down the road, you can pick it up and hit the highlights and remember some of this stuff easier, okay? I am glad y'all have joined me this morning. I'm trying to see who's here. Donna Smith is here. Kay Taylor is here. Um, Mary Snyder is here. Rhonda Thornton is here. Patty White. And I can't scroll down. Oh, Rosa Leach. So I appreciate y'all joining in this morning. For all of you that have to come in later because you work or because you get up late, I understand totally. Um, and y'all just keep trucking, you know. And you can see how much this book is used in order to apply the learning. So I can't stress enough that you ought to buy the book. It's not an expensive book. Um, you can wait longer to get it. Like on Amazon, they've got it for like, I posted it on my page. But if you don't want to pay that price, you can click the used books. And some of them even have a different cover, but they still are the same book on the inside. You can click that used button and buy one for two or three bucks if you want to. But you know they're going to charge you for shipping. So by the time you buy one for, let's say you buy one for three dollars and then they ship it and they charge you four dollars, that's four, five, six, seven dollars when you can just bite the bullet and get a new one. And um, if you have Amazon Prime, you get it Prime, you get it delivered free. If you don't have Amazon Prime, then use the other link that I put on there. That's ChristianBooks.com. Because their book price plus their shipping is charger, charger. It's cheaper than if you don't have Amazon Prime, okay? Um, I guess that's all we'll talk about this morning. I'll scroll this and see if any of y'all said anything else. Well, and Linda Lukey's here. Uh, Kay Taylor's here. Oh, and I got three things to open in the mail and I have not done it so what I'm probably going to do since it's early and I'm up and um, I've gotten I've already swept the floors and done a few things and washed some clothes I think I'll just come back on on Collar Valley Cooks open those gifts and Kay I believe one of those is from you so um, if if you see me come live on in about 15 more minutes or it may not even be 15 minutes it may be 10 minutes uh, to me in it while I open my gifts. I like to open things uh, live. I think it's fun. So uh, let's say our prayers. Thanks for joining in the Bible study today. And tomorrow we will talk about the creation era. Okay? Um, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your book, your word, your son, Jesus Christ, who you have provided as um, a sacrifice uh, through his blood that we may uh, be saved and come to know you. And be close to you again. Um, help us as we go throughout our day today to be the women, the men uh, that we need to be to help uh, shine your light and use us as a vessel uh, as you would see fit. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Okay, I'm going to go grab that and I'll see y'all in a few minutes. Hey, Sherry, Sherry Angel's on here too. Um, I'm going to go grab those and then I'll come back on and open them and we'll see what I've got. Bye, y'all. Love ya.